Samsung's strategy this year is focused on replying to user criticisms of the S6 and Note 5, so this is a year to refine. But camera tech is something Samsung always champions. Let's take an in-depth look at this year's camera app. I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell for Pocket Now, and here's our full camera tour of the Samsung Galaxy S7, brought to you by dbrand. Here it is, the Galaxy S7 camera app. We can always expect a game of leapfrog between Galaxy S and Note phones. A few features missing from the Galaxy S6 are finally included, and a few fun features are added over the Note 5. Everything about this phone is snappy as sin, and launching the camera is no exception. While I loves me a dedicated shutter button, Samsung's double press shortcut is maybe the fastest way to get into any phone camera on the market today. If you've been keeping up, the specs are confirmed from Samsung's unpacked event, and we are looking at a company backing off the megapixel count to focus on low light sensitivity and focus speed and accuracy. Samsung reps were quick to point out that everything here is pre-release, and there could still be a few changes, but honestly, we haven't discovered any omissions or places where we might see major surprises. Maybe the most interesting change from last year's 16 megapixel shooter is the return to a 4x3 aspect ratio image sensor. You'll end up with a fairly square frame if you want all 12 megapixels. The widescreen mode is again the crop and drops resolution down to 9 megapixels. A little disappointing after the number of great cameras we've used incorporating native 16x9 aspect ratios. If you've played with the Note or Edge camera recently, the layout here will be very familiar. We have one main viewfinder to hold both photo and video shutter buttons. Users don't need to switch modes for either option. You compose your shot and decide in that moment if you want to capture a video or a still. Below the shutter is where we'll toggle between the front and rear facing cameras. No surprises with the 5 megapixel front camera. It's still one of the better options for taking pictures of yourself, and is still one of the few to offer quad HD video. Since the Note 4, Samsung's been offering one of the most solid solutions for video bloggers. Below that, we have our mode menu, getting us into pro mode, the new panorama mode, and familiar tools for selective focus, video collage, slow motion, hyperlapse, virtual shot, and live broadcast options. In auto mode, the left side of the frame is home to flash, timer, and HDR controls, and from here we can easily change the resolution and aspect ratio. For folks who like to apply filters, the effects option will handle most jobs there, and you can download additional filters from Samsung. Hitting the gear icon allows us to adjust video resolution, again, very similar options to what the S6 offered, UHD and Quad HD at 30 frames per second, 1080p video at 30 and 60 frames per second, then a square frame option for Instagram purists at 1440 by 1440, then 720p in standard definition resolution modes, which no one will probably ever use in this day and age of monster flagship phones. Samsung has included a motion photo option, which we'll talk about more in a bit, and from this gear menu, we can also toggle composition options like tracking autofocus, grid lines for those of us who live by the rule of thirds, location tagging, picture review options, quick launch settings, raw file saving, volume key control, and the ability to hard reset the whole camera app. My main criticism of this layout from the S6 and the Note 5 remains here, that adjusting these settings removes you from the act of composing your photos and videos, making this a semi-translucent menu wouldn't completely block your viewfinder. Of course, the trend for flagship phone cameras is to include a level of manual controls for us to leave the point-and-shoot camera at home. Here we see improvements over the S6 camera and an expanded range of settings from the Note 5. The layout hasn't changed. A new strip appears left of your shutter button. From bottom to top, you can make quick adjustments to exposure or advance to manual shutter speed, ISO, white balance, and manual focus. On a Galaxy S, we finally get manual shutter speed control with the same 10 second long exposure found on the Note 5. At the top, there are excellent expanded controls for post-processing. You can dial in extremely granular settings for how your photos will be produced when a JPEG is created. Color temperature, tint, contrast, saturation, highlights, and shadow information separate from the main exposure and white balance settings used to capture the photo. Our options for video have improved over last year's phones, but remain a little on the lean side. The menu strip stays in place, but options we can't use are grayed out. This exposure compensation is much easier to use from this strip than the solution offered in auto mode with the floating light bulb or what Apple uses post-focusing. We now have access to white balance and manual focus, but we still lack the ability to adjust shutter speed and ISO. 
Users can toggle between multi-autofocus points or center point. The dual pixel sensor here is fantastic for fast focusing, but it's entirely possible for someone to lock that down to a single autofocus point if need be. Switching up the metering mode will change how the phone adjusts to light conditions. A spot metering mode, for example, will take exposure cues from where you tap on the screen to focus. Even though this is pre-release software, performance is fantastically quick. As mentioned, launching the camera app is fast. The phone is capable of acquiring focus in a about the same amount of time it takes the average human to blink, and the burst mode is insane. The more powerful phone guts paired with the lower resolution means in good light we can pull off a 100 photo burst in a hair less than 6 seconds. That's almost 17 photos per second. In the tech world, we like to stir up geek debates when companies include features that rival manufacturers implemented first. Samsung has added a motion photo setting. But instead of getting up on who did this first, cough, cough, Nokia did it, Samsung has taken steps to improve the output. It's an actual small snippet of video, a la Apple's live photo mode, but it's a smoother and higher quality snippet to capture the moment slightly before and after the photo is taken. Where Samsung has expanded the idea of motion living live photos is by including the feature in panorama creation. Panoramas are created in the same fashion as the S6 and Note 5, wonderfully splicing the photo together through a slow lateral pan. But the phone records the pass as a video file too. We get a finished ultra wide JPEG you can share, but clicking this button on the phone will play through a video sweep of how the panorama was created. It's genuinely a fun feature to expand on the role of video snippets to enhance our still photography. Unfortunately, Samsung reps did not have any of the new camera cases on hand for me to demo. Maybe one of the more exciting developments for mobile phone photogs is a first party case solution for attaching fisheye and wide angle lenses directly to the phone. So folks, for a first look at the Galaxy S7 camera on pre-release software, the state of Samsung photo and video capture looks strong. All the parts here look like they're in place and we didn't run into any serious issues taking the app for a spin. Nothing about the S7 is revolutionary and the camera is no exception. However, this collection of subtle refinements looks to improve over previous Samsung camera offerings. There's a lot more to cover though once we get a Galaxy S7 to review how larger pixels and the wider aperture influence low light performance and the quality of the background blur, so stay tuned for more coverage once we start reviewing the phone proper. A Pocket Now's MWC 2016 coverage is made possible by dbrand, manufacturer of precision cut vinyl skins for smartphones, tablets, laptops, gaming consoles, and more. If you're looking to customize the appearance of your device and add a bit of protection and grip, check out dbrand.com slash MWC, or you can visit the link in the description below. And be sure to subscribe to this channel to catch the rest of the team's MWC coverage from Barcelona. We're getting all kinds of exciting mobility announcements. For Pocket Now, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell. You can chat me up on Instagram and Twitter as some gadget guy, and I will catch you all on the next video.